September 23, 1948. Its hull construction, wooden fenders, observation ports, and shrouds to protect the propellers and rudders indicate that this is not a suicide type of submarine. However, it is an interesting type of submarine for a special purpose. Captain A.L. Dunning, head of Naval Technical Marines. This is number 3746, the sole surviving submarine out of four vessels constructed to a similar design, and it's the only one of the two constructed for the Imperial Japanese Navy, so this vessel in its own is quite rare in the respect that there's nothing else like it. The story regarding these four submarines is shrouded in a lot of mystery as most documents regarding them were destroyed, and in the case of a couple of these submarines, totally destroyed, to the point where we don't even know what the submarines were doing. Luckily for us, a handful of documents regarding number 3746 have survived, so there is some indication as to what the submarine was doing throughout World War II, and that is what we are going to discuss today. In 1929, a man named Nishimura was operating a fishing company, and he was starting to expand his company into underwater research, with emphasis being placed on pink coral around the mandated islands. In order to inspect this coral, he needed a submersible vessel. He would design and construct what would become known as Memesen No. 1, or simply No. 1. This vessel would enter service in 1929 and begin work on the corals. The submarine had an extension arm, a viewing port, and a floodlight for underwater work. It had a displacement of 14 tons, a length of 10 meters, a width of 1.5 meters, and a diving depth of a maximum 300 meters. Its power plant consisted of an electric battery and a small motor. The sub only needed four men to operate it. As number one continues use, a handful of problems are noted, and in 1935, Nishimura improves his design and constructs Memesen number two, or simply referred to as number two. The improvements were, another electric battery was added to improve the amount of time the submarine could remain submerged, two diesel tanks were added along with a diesel motor so that the vessel could actually operate on the surface without draining its batteries and the vessel was slightly larger, having a displacement of 24 tons, a length of 10.78 meters, a width of 1.83 meters, and a maximum diving depth of 350 meters. Its underwater speed was increased slightly to three knots, and its operational time was a maximum of one hour on the two batteries. Of course, when a citizen operates a submarine to great success, this is going to draw the attention of the military, but surprisingly, it was not the Imperial Navy that was drawn in first, but rather the Imperial Japanese Army, whom began using the submarines for so-called research projects. The Imperial Japanese Navy did not take interest until 1936, and even then, they were only interested in submarine number two, not number one, and they began to use number two for so-called investigations. After being used for a short period of time, the Navy listed a handful of complications with the submarine for work that they would be interested in using it in. The problems listed were the vessel had a low operation time, it was slow, it had low buoyancy making it slightly unstable, and the recovery rope could catch on the hull and foul. In 1937, the Imperial Navy's research on number two had screeched to a halt as the Imperial Army requisitioned the vessel and then promptly purchased it for sonar development. The Imperial Japanese Navy, with notes in hand, began developing an improved but similar design to number two. Some of the improvements would be there would be countermeasures to the buoyancy to stabilize the vessel. A falling ballast and buoyancy tank were redesigned. The latent point causing the rope to foul was removed. Rudder guards were added. A sand digger, water jet, and suction pumps were added. Underwater speed would be increased to 4.4 knots, and the maximum diving depth would be increased to 400 meters. The design would be completed in 1938, and two vessels would be ordered from the Kirei Naval Shipyard. This would be number 3746 and number 3747, 
Both vessels were completed in 1938. After the vessel was commissioned, the next time it is recorded is in 1940 when it participates in the location and salvaging of I-63's wreckage. The I-63 was a Kadai-class cruiser submarine. On February 2, 1939, the vessel was participating in fleet exercises in the Bungo Strait off Kyushu when the I-60 accidentally rammed I-63's starboard side. The I-63 sank in several minutes, taking nearly all of her 87-man crew. Following the successful salvation of I-63 in 1940, Number 3746 is not noted again until 1943 when it is supposedly participating in investigations on the wreckage of battleship Mutsu following its devastating internal explosion at Hashirahima Anchorage. Number 3746 was apparently around Mutsu's pagoda when its rope fouled in the pagoda and the submarine was nearly lost. Following this incident, it would no longer be used on the investigation of Mutsu's explosion. Following its claimed investigation on Mutsu's wreck, number 3746 does not reappear again until 1946 when the United States is taking inventory on Japanese submarines at Kirei Naval Arsenal for destruction. All four of the Nishimura-type submarines would survive the war and the United States would occupy all four of them. Number one and number two would be scrapped, Number 3746 would be selected to be moved to the United States, where it would be housed at the Mariner's Museum for investigation, and number 3747 would be displayed in Japan for a few years, but in the 1950s it would be scrapped. Taking back focus on number 3746, the submarine would be moved from Kirei to Yokosuka, then to Pearl Harbor, then from Pearl Harbor down the west coast through the Panama Canal, where it would then travel up the east coast of the United States into Hampton Roads. Once arriving at Hampton Roads, it would be unloaded onto a truck and then taken to the Mariner's Museum, where it would be offloaded and placed on public display slash naval investigation. When the United States occupied the four Nishimura-type submarines, they assumed all four of them were late suicide vessels since they were in low quantities and the United States had no idea where they came from. This is why three of the four were destroyed, because Japanese war submarines were being put on the chopping board so that they were no longer a threat. Now before we hop into the United States investigation, it is worth noting that in the photographs of the submarine arriving at Hampton Roads and then being offloaded at the Mariner's Museum, it has clearly taken damage on the trip from Japan to the United States. It's missing a fender, and its manipulator and suction pumps for coral collection were ripped away. Once the submarine had found its location for display, a small plaque was placed up which indicated the vessel as a suicidal attack submarine, even though in reality this is not the case. However, it would not be until 1948 that the United States would discover the true purpose of the submarine. In the 1948 annual report on the submarine investigation, it was stated, we were advised during the year by the Navy Department that their recent investigations find this to be a type of submarine for salvage work and not attack as we were first informed. With the investigations on the submarine coming to a close in 1948, many components from the interior were removed and or disabled, the submarine was chained shut, and a small hole was cut in the stern to allow ventilation so humidity did not build up inside and cause excessive deterioration. Sometime during the mid-1970s, the submarine was removed from public display and placed on external storage since there were no interior spaces large enough to house the sub. It was simply placed into the mud with its keel fully buried. In June of 2021, the submarine was lifted and placed on a specially built platform where its keel could be investigated and also lifted out of the mud so it does not continue to rust and cavitate on a rapid pace. Number 3746 is set for the conservation lab so that it can be preserved for generations to come since it is the sole surviving vessel of its type. With that being said, it would appear the timeline for these submarines is completed. However, it's not. There is one more submarine to discuss, and this would be Mamison No. 3. Mamison No. 3 was also designed by Nishimura, as he attempted to reopen his research business following the Second World War. He was having negotiations on pricing 
and rebuilding. However, negotiations fell through and his business was not revived, meaning Mamison No. 3 was never built, though it had an approved design. Unfortunately for us, Memesen No. 3's design has been lost to history, and Mr. Nishimura himself died in the 1950s as far as I have read. Hopefully you have found the story of the Nishimura submarines interesting. If so, why not subscribe and leave a comment down below, and have a wonderful day.